The veil of rarity is lifted once again for our 10th PS4 Wave review. Rarity comes in all forms, shapes, and sizes, and we wish to cover every title, no matter how obscure, no matter how strange, or how controversial. So buckle up as we take you on a road trip down Rarity Lane. Welcome back everyone to our special 10th review of PS4 titles. This one is going to be chocked full of rare games, so stick around and we'll get right to it. Now this is our first title called Too Dark. This is the limited edition from the creators of Alone in the Dark. Um, it does have an 18 rating in uh, the UK and uh, it's made by Gloomy Wood and Big Ben. Uh, this is the really cool steelbook edition of this game. Uh, as you can see, it's got a really cool looking case. Uh, I love the, the artwork on this. It's just really uh, crazy looking. I have always likes crazy looking art and that is definitely out there. Uh, so as we open up the Steelbook case, this is what you would get. Of course your game on the right side, uh, a little bit of uh, papers in there, and then a soundtrack as well. Underneath all this stuff is uh, pretty cool too. You can see that there is some really sweet looking artwork there. Um, I actually dig that artwork quite a bit. Um, on this side, the same thing you got going. As you can see, very cool. Uh, you don't get to see that every day, so there you go. Uh, the inside of the Steelbook case. And also you will get the art book with this game right here. As you can see, it's uh, <laughs> uh, focusing on the bloody aspect of the game, which uh, it's not extremely bloody, but there are some parts that do get a little nuts. Um, there's your uh, the guy that created the game, I believe, right there. And uh, really cool art, very disturbing art, but very well, uh, well drawn art and uh, just really interesting concepts here going on so uh, if you can uh, appreciate a game with artistic direction such as this then um, this game may appeal to you um, it's one of those games that i don't think will appeal to everyone um, but um, it's definitely got some sadistic things in it and some things that not everybody would be happy about seeing but uh, there you go there's your front and back of the game and let's just get right into too dark Adventure, stealth, and horror with a hint of unintentional child abuse. Too Dark is a gloomy but bold look at abduction and retribution. It's a game you're stuck with because with every incorrect turn, it will result in a gratuitous impaling. However, it's also a game you need to stick with to fully appreciate the direction. I won't lie when I say the controls need some refinement. The use of the D-pad comes at some of the most inopportune times. Story-wise, it's a vulgar, somewhat adolescent progression, which is slightly annoying. We need to stop giving these child abductors fuel for their addictions. Every now and then I'll find myself strolling uh, in through GameStop or a different game store and come across a game that's a little harder to find, which I did with this one. This is Axiom Verge, and as you can see it kind of embraces the pixelated look that a lot of the older games used to have. Um, it's rated E10 plus for some fantasy violence and mild language. Uh, not amazing presentation on the back, but on the front does look pretty cool. Um, on the inside, as you can see, it's not too much going on there either. But uh, very interesting game and uh, one that you should give maybe a little time to. But uh, really, if you don't get into this, I don't recommend you giving it the full amount of time it deserves. Just because the payoffs aren't amazing, they're okay, but they're not amazing. Um, still a game that is definitely appealable to a lot of different gamers, I think, with the way it looks. So, about this one. Some games bank on the fact that they can clone classics and give players a throwback to nostalgia. Here we see a heavily influenced Super Metroid montage, and it pretty much nails it all the way through. Don't expect a four or five hour journey because there's a grip of exploration and acquisition of items. Also, the sheer types of weapons and what they do are mind-boggling. If you like to be confused further, the story will no doubt place gaps where there should be bridges. It's somewhat of a mess of what could be greatness, but oddly enough, kept me playing. And dipping into some more rarity, we come to Blue Rider. This is the limited edition. I believe it's by Ravegan, is, is the uh, publisher on this one. And it's also an East Asia Soft Play Asia title, and also the first one they released, as far as I've uh, studied on this particular one. There's the back, and what you're going to get in this box set, uh, some really cool artwork, actually, or uh, font, I should say, on that writing. But uh, what you get in this is, of course, the game. We'll go over that here first. Um, presented very nicely. I really like the way that they uh, made the artwork on the front of the game and um, presented nicely on the back as well as you can see there. Um, on the inside of this you do get a full color booklet which is really interesting. You don't usually get full color on these things but this one happens to have it. 
So another, you know, cool addition to this game. Um, but just the game, no soundtrack with this one. Um, what else you'll get with this is pretty cool. It's actually a, a little uh, certificate number voucher. Uh, this one's number 1731 out of 2,500 of these, so that's really cool. Uh, it is embossed, as you can see, and it's got some artwork there uh, on the back as well. So really, really cool. You also get this soundtrack as well, which I have not opened or listened to yet. Uh, but as I played the game, I did like some of the music that they use, so the soundtrack shouldn't be that bad to pop in later. But let's just get right on to, into Blue Rider. Rare basic top-down shooters are so hard to find, so when you got one, let me know. Or just maybe you can pop in Blue Rider for a challenging attempt. On the surface, you have a game that is semi-unique compared to the majority of titles currently available and limited to 2,500 copies, so it's a welcomed rarity to say the least. It does lack enough originality, however, to earn a spot in a Hidden Gems countdown, and the difficulty may turn away some passerbys. The level design and gameplay mechanics are very average, so maybe it's named appropriately. Kind of like a sad type of dance performed on your lap. Next we bring to you a very fun kitty quest uh, by The Gentle Bros, um, which is funny in itself, and then another company which I can only pronounce as Pube, but uh, I believe it's pronounced Pogue, I'm not sure. Anyway, if you guys know, let me know in the comments below. This is rated E10+. Plus. As you can see on the inside, there's not much going on. And it is rated E4 Fantasy Violence. Very well presented. I really like the art direction they took with this. Uh, this is the kind of game that you'll just sit down with on a weekend or a weekday even. And just enjoy the little virtual kitty world that they give you here. Let's talk about it. Perfect example of classic looting and RPG elements you miss. Like real-time battles centered in a kitty kingdom of canned cat food. Yes, I was good at tongue twisters in grade school, but more importantly, this game was good at bringing the alley to the islands. There are many areas to explore with hidden items and battles to engage in. Also, the difficulty is more on the level of pussy than catastrophic. So pick up this title while you can, and you'll be feline fine. Now, I don't usually do this, but this game here deserves its spot in a rarity video. Um, and I really hope that one day I do have a physical copy of this game. Um, this is the most physical copy I can get, though, at the moment. And it was for PS3 or for PS4. They give you some download codes with it when you purchase it. It's out, actually out of Japan, as you can see there, by Ubisoft. And it's called Child of Light. And what a wonderful game this is. Um, it's got such an amazing presentation, better than any of the games in my list today. Uh, and I would say this game is definitely a game that you want to play no matter who you are or where you are. So let's open it up and I'll just basically show you the art book that comes with it because that's pretty much all that you get uh, void of codes. Everything else has a code on it, so I'm not going to show all the codes. But you get this little, uh, you know, little sampler thing that they give you uh, with the game or with the DLC, I should say. Um, and here you get the artwork right here, some of the artwork of Child of Light. Very cool looking book. On the inside, actually, it doesn't do the game justice. As you can see, it's cool looking, but doesn't quite uh, sell anything for me. Until I played it, I really didn't uh, feel it after looking at this book. Even though the book is cool, it just wasn't um, on the level of what you see visually when you play the game. And here's your uh, Princess Aurora. That's pretty cool. Um, so that's one of the things you get. Inside also is a poster which I'm not going to unravel completely fully for you, but as you can see, it's got the same type of style artwork as the art book. So that's what you'll get with this one. Um, let's just get right on into Child of Light. A complete stunner with flawless art depiction, a combat-specific attention to detail, and truly an RPG to remember for the ages. The somber yet hopeful atmosphere will suck you into its wake and hold on like a riptide. I found myself taking moments of silence, and this is when I realized I was entrapped in not only its story, but its message. As a whole, I have to place this one in the top 10 best RPGs of all time. And next we bring you Dex. This one is by Dreadlocks and rated 16 by the UK standards there. Really cool looking artwork on this. I really dig the presentation. I thought they did a great job on that. Um, <clears throat> these games are actually rated a little bit differently. As you can see, uh, right there, it has some bad language and a little bit of violence uh, with this one. But this one kind of had a Blade Runner feel. Um, when you open this up inside, you get some really cool looking artwork with the soundtrack right here. They give you as well with all those tracks on it. 
Um, so I can't complain. I'm really happy that they decided to make another color booklet for me. Um, I love it uh, when you get these color booklets that come inside the games because the black and white ones just don't do anything for me. I just love that I have this artwork that I can look at, uh, you know, aside from the game itself, of course. But this is actually a pretty darn well-crafted game right here, guys. Let's talk about it. Dex. Here we go. A title that you may catch on someone's rare hit list. It's gritty, it's futuristic, it's multifaceted, and one of the best at trying to be not only nostalgic, but uniquely different. Truly, if I were to have some complaints, it would be one, a bit stiff feeling in fights, and two, weak sound effects throughout. But there's a lot of other gems we are given here, including classic side-scrolling RPG elements and action. It has accomplished what many games can't, and that's enough to land in my Rolodex of PS4 titles. Next in our bag of goodies, we bring to you yet another UK title. This one is called Ginger Beyond the Crystal. And as you can see, it has some amazing art direction on the front. I really like it. Um, and oddly enough, is by the same publisher as the last game, Badland Games, there on the right, which I didn't know how to pronounce, so I didn't last time. I apologize. And this is also by Drakkar Studio as well. It is rated 7 for a little bit of violence, as we can see on the back there, but is presented very nicely all the way around. And as we open this one, we can see there is some art artwork on the disc, but no insert to speak of. So I did buy this one new. This is what you get. Uh, you don't have an insert with this particular game, but uh, we'll get right into it now for you. Add a little color to any vegetable and you can have a cute and colorful 3D platforming adventure right on your home console. Now I'm not a huge fan of this shenanigans, so going in I was a bit skeptical. I have to say they nabbed me on the opening level and the following stages proved mediocre to great. So much to explore and take an active part in. Beware of altercations, however, because the mechanics took a dip below the Smurfs on PS3 in execution. I use that analogy to stay color coordinated, of course. Graphically, it's not a title that necessarily needed to be on PS4, and I'm a little annoyed I didn't have this as a PS3 option in North America, but hey, at least I have an option to cure my bellyache for 90s platformers. Super Secret Mexican Game Rating? The world may never know. That is, unless they play Guacamele Super Turbo Championship Edition. And yes, you see it right. Those are chickens on the cover. And if you've ever seen the movie Return to Oz, you will see the nature of the chicken. And let's get started with this game, guys. There's absolutely no rating on this, which is pretty amazing to see. You don't usually see that on a game. Um, it's by Drinkbox Studios. Um, what you're going to get for content in here is some comic mischievousness and maybe a little bit of violence. So that's about it. I do recommend the game for anyone. On the inside, there is no insert, but they do have a controller layout on the in underside of the cover for the artwork. And let's get right into guacamole. Grim Fandango paper mache set in Old Mexico. Get ready to dip yourself into some guacamole and savor its smooth progression. Within the six hour campaign, upgrades seem generous and hombres seem plentiful. The art is depicted masterfully and really sets the mood for its intended atmosphere. I think most gamers will enjoy this title for its creativity and action based gameplay, not to mention collectors for its limited release of only 3,800 copies. Yes, we have it, and you've seen it here first. This is Guns, Gore, and Cannoli. And this one is by Crazy Monkey Studios, and I love, love, love the art direction on the front of the cover here. Um, again, it does not have a rating, but what you're going to get in this is a violence, a little bit of language, mild language, and some blood, and a little bit of gore as well. Um, so it at least deserves a T rating uh, on its way to mature, but probably a T only would suffice for this one. Um, that is, if you don't mind your kids playing pretty violent, cartoonish-like zombie killing games. So that's what you do. It's up to four-player local co-op. It has a versus mode. It's by the Clays Brothers and a VAF game as well. And this is a strictly limited game, which is a, kind of like an offshoot of Limited Run, but this is the fourth release that they've done. Uh, this one happens to be number 475. This is the German version. As we open it up, as you can see, there's the artwork on the disc and no insert at all on this one. So talking about Guns Gore, if you happen to have an evening free and a couple of moolies wanting to play some gunslinging mafia style zombie carnage, it's the perfect getaway. If you want substance and a well-written side-scroller shooter, you won't want to drop $80 for this glutton of gore. On the surface, it's a great dive-in and demolished playthrough, similar to Metal Slug, but look elsewhere for an award-winning script. 
All it took for me to blow through my billfold was to hear there were only 1,500 copies and I was on it like an Italian in a gelato parlor. I guess I'm a sucker for hire. And for the last game of the evening, we bring to you a good one. This is Hyper Light Drifter. And as you can see, that artwork on the front is awesome. As you move the light just right, you can see the hint of gold in there on the cover. And it is just really cool looking artwork on the front of this game. This one is by Heart Machine and also by I Am 8-Bit. Um, on the back, it's really presented nicely as well. And again, no rating on this particular game but this one you're basically just getting violence and strange imagery mostly um, so that's what you get with your uh, content on this one um, very cool on the side it actually lights up gold as well and then if we open up the cover it really is reminiscent of dark side of the moon by pink floyd i thought um, very cool looking very well constructed artwork and game here this is uh the instruction booklet it comes with right here and as you can see um, it is a color booklet and looks fantastic on the inside. A lot of good depictions of uh, characters in the game and of things that you run into. Um, really, really like this book. Probably my favorite book in my collection of uh, games in this review so far. Um, also, it does come with a map, which I'm not going to open because it's huge and I won't be able to fit it in frame anyway. But another cool part to this game is that if you take out the disc, as you can see there, you have a gold reflective uh, reversible cover that you can put on this game, which is so, so cool. And it does have the gold writing, um, of course, um, on the flip side of this as well. So very cool cool, very awesomely crafted game. Let's go ahead and talk about its content now. A quick note before I end the video with my last review, I'd like to thank all of you once again for watching. I really do appreciate every view I see pop up on my channel. It really gives me that drive to do more of these types of videos for you guys. And in the future, I have some new uh, material coming, so please stay tuned for that. Let's get into Hyperlight Drifter. You're going to be out of your gourd as you experience a light spectacle of pixelated refraction, and its wordless story speaks volumes. It's Berserk mixed with Fury and Strider on a Zelda slash Tron game grid. But as amazing as all that sounds, it's not void of some production issues. Locked in at 30 frames per second on a system that can upscale to 4K just wasn't quite thinking it through. Also, if I wanted to search for useful items inside walls, I would much rather demolish an old house and look for some golden or silver age comic books. Ultimately, I smell a revision on the horizon for PS5. This game had so much potential, but a lack of general direction. Well, there you have it. A candy collage of physical media not so easily attained without some effort and bling. The one thing all gamers or collectors have in common is the search for something so unique that it redefines the genre or creates one of its own. This is G1 Toys saying remember to tip your favorite gaming go-to channel with a subscription. And as always, game happy. Ready Player One?